Jim Beagle stands in the world's largest vineyard for a wildly popular sweet white table grape known as Cotton Candy. He is CEO and co-owner of Grapery, the company that first introduced this variety through its ongoing breeding program and named the grape for its flavor profile, so similar to that of the familiar fairground treat. As Jim recalls, neither he nor the breeder especially liked it when they produced their first edible samples. So we were actually about to throw the grape away because it's a really difficult grape to grow. There's all sorts of problems with the grape in terms of how farmers would traditionally define problems. But I would take the grape just because it was unique and different. I would take it to different tastings and people would taste it and everybody who tasted it loved it. Everybody except myself and the breeder. So we finally realized it doesn't matter what we like, it matters what everybody else likes. And so um, convinced the breeder and our partners to allow us to take the cotton candy and launch it in the market and run with it. And uh, once we did, it was been a huge success. We got a lot of media interest and consumer interest in the grape and it really took off and became a, a big hit almost overnight, it feels like. There are many other similar operations in the surrounding radius of California's San Joaquin Valley. So we're in uh, near the town of McFarland, California, right in the heart of the best table grape growing region in the world. There's uh, more table grapes grown here uh, of a high quality than any single spot in the rest of the world, over about a 70 mile radius from around here, and we are at the epicenter of it. All those growers share the same challenges too, weighing many different factors when it comes to harvesting and shipping their product. It's far too easy for farmers to, to depict grapes before they reach their peak maturity for lots of reasons. And there's a lot of pressure in the food system to do that. But Grapery does not, because picking at the optimal moment is the only way to ensure optimal flavor. But we're really disciplined at Grapery about waiting until that flavor is at its absolute peak, because we think in the long run, sacrificing some things in the short run, but having people always have a great experience makes us a more sustainable and honestly fun business in the long run to have grapes that always taste great. It's just more, it's just more fun for us. Which is to say that flavor is the absolute priority for Jim and his partner, Jack Pandol, who founded the company. The latter is a third generation table grape farmer. His grandfather, Stjepi, was among the immigrants from Croatia who set up in this valley in the early 1900s. Father was a foreman for a large farming company. So when I was five years old, he would leave me with crews in the vineyards in the summertime and on the weekends whenever I had a break from school and I started picking grapes when I was five years old and have done every job in the vineyards my, my whole life. I've lived out here in the vineyards. He later studied viniculture and farmed for a while himself before partnering with Jack and Grapery. And we're a small company, so my partner and I do pretty much everything from farming, the breeding, the harvesting, the sales and marketing, making sure all the grapes are cared for from beginning to end and rely on both of our lifetimes in the vineyards as great experience that helps shape what we do at Grapery and, and always finding new ways to do things. And I'm the only one that's allowed to set the standard that we harvest at. Over the years, I've conditioned my taste buds to know what's gonna get a great reaction out of people and when is it gonna be that flavor that people are just gonna love and can't wait to buy more. As proven with the case of cotton candy, it's not so much a matter of his personal taste as his sense for what will fly on the market. This awareness runs right through the 11 varieties that Grapery now grows commercially. The 20 or so they are currently testing and the 15 to 20,000 they consider each year as part of their renowned breeding program. Out of that 15,000, we hope to end up with one or two that a consumer is gonna love. Another hit for the company has been a sweet red variety called Candy Snaps, now part of the Grapery's gumdrops range of grapes with confectionery-like flavors. This variety is also grown and sold by other suppliers, but their grapes are often much larger than Jim and Jack's. When it comes to flavor, we have to recalibrate our minds around what makes a great piece of fruit, and too often people think a big piece of fruit is better, and bigger is not always better when it comes to flavor. We can get the berries bigger. We know how to do that. There's a lot of farming practices that get them larger. Every time we get them larger, it loses all the flavor. So that's one of those situations where you can buy candy snaps from lots of different growers around the world. 
and so many of them are tempted to make them large that they lose all the flavor. And it's not the same experience for the consumer at all. We don't focus on size. They're, they're smaller grapes than you're probably gonna see anywhere else in a, in a premium store, but they taste amazing every time. Our produce team would tend to agree that the sweet crunch of the end result is entirely on point. It's a red grape, uh, almost super sweet, so I'd say slightly sweeter than the cotton candy. A nice depth of flavour, a nice rounded flavour. Uh, that's the one I've been munching on the most today, actually. I really, really enjoy that one. Everything in the grapery catalogue is bred and grown using centuries-old techniques. The company prides itself on an all-natural approach. Interventions are limited to specialist farming techniques such as girdling, where very precise incisions are made in a grapevine at certain times of year to redirect the flow of sugars into the fruit. The resulting scars in the bark are only temporary and the method is deployed for one reason only, to concentrate flavor. Our harvest season starts in California in early July and runs through mid-October. Any single variety usually has about a 10-week harvest window, uh, but some varieties come earlier and later, and the group of varieties that we have runs from mid-July to, to, to mid to late October. It starts with pruning, irrigation, leaf canopy management, the kind of yield we allow to have on the vines. Everything we do all year long contributes to growing a crop that tastes great. So flavor never stops.